Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top beautiful day here in the end times and of course this is the the end of the American Empire. Uh, we are celebrating today on the 4th of July 2022 and uh, several articles which I'm not going to get into on the 4th of July the the uh, the theme du jour is uh, about how this country is more divided than it has ever been since uh, the Civil War and uh, and and there is plenty of evidence that we are heading into a uh, a new civil war but uh, I'm not going to go there on this channel so uh, while the American Empire spirals down into oblivion uh, into its ashes on the 4th of July I'm just going to uh, read this article very deeply in the mainstream media of all places from Men's Health Magazine. Uh, Men's Health Magazine. <clears throat> and see, as I'm reading this, or I'm going to put the link on, or you go read it yourself, what does this remind you of? As you're reading this, where have we heard similar warnings about other things similar to this before? that we completely ignored. And this is an article looking at more reasons to abandon the space program. You know, the space program might be the single biggest waste of taxpayer dollars on the planet. It, it is just flushing money down a toilet and here's one more reason not to flush the money down the toilet, take it away, Men's Health Magazine. Space flight will warm Earth's stratosphere four degrees, study finds. The takeaway, a new study shows what will happen if space flight increases by a factor of 10. This estimate is in line with the trajectory of increasing spaceflight, the carbon emissions will heat the troposphere, will heat the, is it the stratosphere or the troposphere, and scramble global wind currents, as if global wind currents are not scrambled enough. Okay. In new research published earlier this month, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Agency, otherwise known as NOAA, simulated the effect of greatly increased spaceflight on the stratosphere. The results show that planned spaceflight over the next few decades could raise Earth's temperature, change global air currents and dampen the ozone layer. The study appears in the Journal of Geophysical Research Atmosphere. Uh, and then there's a link to the full study. This is the English version of that study. These days, these days, it is hard to pull up any technology or any science-oriented news site without seeing something about Elon Musk's satellite launches, his plans to send many ships to Mars, NASA's big slate of upcoming Artemis mission launches, the rise of private spaceflight, and the increase in national spaceflight from previously unrepresented nations. It is a huge moment for space, so traffic is about to get worse. When I first heard 
this is a woman named Carolyn Delbert, by the way. Uh, take it away, Caroline. When I first heard that NOAA had studied the effects of increased spacecraft launches on the atmosphere, I thought it might relate to the crafts punching through and burning the surrounding clouds, something that can affect precipitation as it creates an effect called nucleation. These are known as hole punch clouds, and while cool looking and interesting, they don't really affect anything that much. And this is where I'm a little confused. Uh, I always thought that uh, black suit carbon emissions, you know, the actual particulate matter, cooled the planet. But I guess it's where it spilled. So all of this stuff about global dimming uh, and, and, and all of this a freak out about global dimming. Uh, and, and now I'm hearing 180 degree different information. Uh, so I guess it all depends on where you spew this stuff. The truth is a lot darker Literally, in the study, NOAA is primarily examining the flood of black carbon that comes from rocket fuel emissions as they blast through the second layer of the atmosphere known as the stratosphere. Virtually all rocket fuel is made of hydrocarbons, something that the industry has been working to try to reduce or mitigate. Most hydrocarbons burn kerosene and leave behind a trail of burned or black carbon in the form of soot. Black carbon, so, uh, so again, uh, guys, uh, this goes against everything. Either I misunderstand, somebody is misunderstanding global dimming. This goes, uh, I, 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 anyway, th this is what uh, Noah is saying, uh, confuse them till they die, as they say. Black carbon in the atmosphere is like dressing earth in a black shirt on a sunny day. It attracts and holds heat, leading to overall warming of the atmosphere. Airplanes also emit carbon pollution in this way, but there are a few key differences. First, airplanes emit respectively less carbon because they're taking off in a way that doesn't fight physics as much. And second, virtually all commercial airliners max out in the troposphere one layer below the ozone key stratosphere. Yes, for what it's worth, airlines are working to reduce carbon emissions and have been testing things like a hydrogen airliner and a partly electric airliner. Yes. <coughs> for its study, NOAA used today's baseline for carbon pollution which is 1,000 tons of rocket suit per year. Then the team multiplied that figure by 10, which it says is a believable estimate given the recent increase in rocket launches as well as global plans over the next few decades. At this projected rate, the amount of rocket fuel soot in the atmosphere would raise the temperature in that layer by up to four degrees Fahrenheit, not Celsius. It is the rising temperature that in turn affects the ozone layer. Well, it's not just that. The rising temperature also affects atmospheric circulation, which is the complex overlay of wind currents that push air all around the world all the time, like jet streams or polar vortices. The rising temperature NOAA is forecasting 
will dampen some jet streams by as much as three and a half percent. Both the rising temperatures and the change in the jet stream will reduce ozone in global altitude, global latitudes north of Houston, Texas by as much as 4%. Those who launch rockets into space are not inured to the fact that rocket fuel carbon emissions are a huge problem. There are a number of alternatives that are in different phases of research, including some that are likely considered unpopular, like nuclear reactors. If anything, the NOAA research will help to incentivize more research into these alternatives and hopefully we'll start to see prototypes sooner than later. Uh, anyway, guys, I think we heard these same warnings. Wasn't I reading a letter from 1977 to Jimmy Carter by uh, some scientist uh, back in 1977? sounding kind of the same warnings as this. Uh, you, you know, it, it really is time to bring uh, this whole game down. Increasing space flight. Uh, I could go a little crazy here on Collapse Chronicles, but I'll save that for somewhere else some other time. Talking about space flight, we could have a little more fun with the subject. But uh, it's the 4th of July, baby. And I have to get out there and uh, burn some hydrocarbons to celebrate the decline and fall of the American Empire. Happy birthday, America. Bye, guys.